Well, hello and welcome to Q3 Real Estate Agent Launch. This is best practices and Q&A around Win by Noon. I'm so excited to have you here. We're gonna first start off with a couple of quick polls so I can determine a couple of things to make sure that I'm talking the best language to all of you. So uh, super fired up that you are here. So the first question that we're gonna ask is, are you new to Win by Noon, yes or no? All right, um, we will wait and see. All right, just need a couple more of you to vote. All right, so you are all new. That is perfect, because if you were experienced with Win by Noon, this may not be the best webinar for you to watch. Take a look through the YouTube channel and see if there's something different. We'll be having other webinars later this month and throughout the quarter on advanced application and tips and techniques. Um, the second thing is I wanna know which edition are you using? Uh, let's launch that poll. Now there's two editions or maybe you don't know. So the first edition is the launch edition, right? So the launch edition means you got this little rocket ship thing here. Um, that is the undated edition with the instructions in the front. And then some of you actually may have one that actually just says this here, Q3 on it, right? Which is the dated version of it. Um, and it looks like we got a split of people with both. And so I'm gonna be talking to you guys as if you're using either one. It, it doesn't really matter, the concepts are the same. Um, and so when I teach Win by Noon, I always wanna start off with what is Win by Noon. I can't remember if I said it, but I think I did. I'm Todd Bookspan, the founder of Win by Noon, just in case I did uh, just brain fade there. So uh, I run, it's the third time I've taught this today. I taught it live to a group of real estate agents this morning, and then I taught the loan officer launch just like this uh, last hour. So I'm excited to have this opportunity to help all of you. Now, um, what I would tell you is that people always ask me, well, what is Win by Noon? You know, first off, it's just a, just a quarterly day planner, right? Um, it's a, it's a, tracks your to-do list, tracks your calendar. And what I find is people who use it as a to-do list and as their calendar, as a notepad, they're more productive than people who don't. We all have to carry around a piece of paper. So granted, it's not the smallest piece of paper, but it's a whole lot better than you know something like this or the back of a receipt or a, a napkin, right? The second thing is, and really what it's built as is a, it's a business planning tool, right? It's a business planning tool that helps you plan and review your day, month, week, quarter, and ultimately your whole year. And what we find is, is that people use it as a business planning tool, right? The whole idea that success leaves clues are the ones who really grow the most with Win by Noon. And that's really what I wish for all of you. And then lastly, it's a philosophy, right? It's a philosophy of this idea that the best of the best do their most important things first before they react to everything else. I don't know about you, but I've woken up before in the morning, waking up, woken up, got up in the morning before, and I had this great to-do list. Like I had some amazing things I was gonna accomplish that day that were actually pretty important to me or my clients or my partners. And lo and behold, I got to the end of the day, a day where I did this, I just reacted to this little thing called the cell phone all day, reacted to my email, maybe got lost on social media, and I didn't get those most important activities done. Huh. I don't know about you, but that happened to me a lot. And so when I blocked off my calendar in the morning and I said, these are the critical activities I'm gonna do first, my most important things, uh, I became, uh, more consistent, I became more efficient, and I found that I actually had higher conversion rates, I had happier clients, happier partners, there's nothing wrong with that. And really, I learned it from realtors, right? The best of the best realtors, lead generate every morning. They say that's my number one thing, is lead generation and lead conversion, and a lot of you do that day in and day out, and if you don't, I would encourage you, maybe you need to take a look at that, because ultimately in the end, I think the difference between the most successful agents and those who are doing okay or are inconsistent is that commitment to the lead conversion. We'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. Now, I got two places I can start. I can either start with what does a day look like and how do we track a day, or I can start with the ideal week. Now, those of you who have a launch edition, you guys have the instructions built in. Now, if you don't have a launch edition, you have one that's dated because you bought that or you've never seen the launch edition because you, you're newer, you know, just ping me, uh, Todd at winbynoon.com. I'll send you a copy of instructions. Maybe we'll even get them posted below later. Um, but ultimately, it walks you through step-by-step step how to start with Win by Noon. Now, the biggest thing and the most important thing is that along the way, it has this thing that says, if this is too much for you, don't do it, right? And so the reason that I'm going to teach you guys just how to start with a day of Win by Noon is because if nothing else, skip all the beginning stuff and just go to today's date, right? Here we are, July 1st, 2019. Just start there, right? Start there and just start recording the activities that you're doing today. Okay, got that? Don't get overwhelmed by the business planning piece yet because we'll talk about how to do it going forward and some other resources that'll be available to you. So there's the day and there's the ideal week. I'm gonna spend just a minute talking about the ideal week. So the ideal week for those of you who are using the 
uh, the launch edition, right? It's got actually what the, what this looks like on page 14, right? And so the reason I do this is because when I've done my group coaching, the people who actually adhere to the ideal week are the ones who grow the fastest. They gain momentum the quickest because ultimately most people wake up, they go to their day and their, their calendar looks kind of like this. So I taught these realtors today and the guy in front of me, here's what his ideal week looked like. Today's Monday and it's the first of the quarter and his ideal week looked just like this. It's blank. And guess what? Mine looked like this yesterday morning, but yesterday afternoon, I put in what my week looked like and now it looks like this, right? So again, it's, it's a matter of writing in there because when you write it down, number one is it connects your brain to the activity, right? It helps you, right? It's, I know, guess what? Just like yours, on my calendar here and on my computer is my schedule. But when I put it on here, it tells me what are the gaps I have to fill? What is it I need to get done this week? What does my week look like? Hey, gosh, look at that. Wednesday afternoon is wide open. Maybe I can, maybe I can schedule some business planning activities there. Uh, maybe I can figure out there's someone I should be connecting with that I now have time to connect. Um, it's going to help you be committed. And the biggest thing in here is if you look, was it says dial, right? It's got my dial in there, right? Everyone says, well, yeah, I'll get to that. But you know what? I know exactly what I was doing at 9 a.m. this morning. I was dialing my phone. I know exactly what I'll be doing not tomorrow at 9 a.m. And I'm not going to stop till I hit noon or I finish my committed activities. Um, and so what we'll talk about is, is what I divide these activities into two parts require daily disciplines, right? And these are disciplines that realtors all over the country have told me that you guys need to do all the time. And yours may vary slightly, but ultimately every day you should be doing lead follow-up, period, right? Statistics show that if you do six calls to a lead, you're 90% or more likely to convert that lead. And I would be telling you that most of the time when I talk to a realtor, when they got a lead, whether it's online or from someone else, they don't have quite that commitment. In fact, sometimes it's zero calls because they were waiting for the person to call them. Typically it's one or two, only 10% of people actually make more than two calls or more than one call. Um, so that's kind of crazy, right? Like that's, that's a small number. And so think about that. How does that apply to you? Cause if you make more calls, guess what? You convert more leads. Um, and ultimately yeah, we need lead flow and we need lead follow up. Um, the other thing is we want to make database calls every day, right? I mean, you guys know the value of one of your clients and if you spend a lot of time, uh, pursuing just the new and you're not actually farming at home, the bottom line is your, your competition is going to outspend you right now, right? There's no doubt in my mind that every big real estate company has the opportunity to outspend you. Um, they're, they're going to. And so you have people who know you and like you and trust you. You've got to make a committed activity to do that every day. Um, then I'll kind of walk you through a week and what I view a week like. Now with you guys, it's harder. You guys have the hardest job truly because you do work seven days a week. And so I set this up as a framework and if you have no framework, start with this one. And if you, if you have, you know, you take Monday and Tuesday off, great, start this on Wednesday. If you um, already do one of these activities a different day of the week, my first question is, awesome, how consistent are you? And if the answer is I'm not very consistent, then scrap your day, do my day. If I say, well, how successful are you with being consistent with that? And you say, well, it's not really getting the results, then scrap it, do my day. There's reasons for it. It's really from talking to, you know, hundreds of realtors around the country who are successful that, that we come up with these days. Um, and so Tuesday, let's start with Tuesday. There's a reason why I'm gonna start with Tuesday. Actually, let's start with Monday. Monday is plan your week, plan and review your week. So if you're brand new, you're just gonna be planning your week. You're gonna get off this call and you're gonna fill out your ideal week. I run it through the guy sitting in front of me. Guess what he started doing while we were sitting there? Started filling out his ideal week. Why? Because his team dials from uh, nine to noon every day. So he just blocked that off. I said, hey, that's easy for you guys. You guys already have this. Most realtors have to figure out when they can do that. For me, I started mine at 8.30 when I was doing loans because guess what? I dropped my daughter off for school at 8.30 and then I literally picked up the phone in my car and I started dialing. And so you have this opportunity to start that activity whenever you're gonna start it, but be committed, write it down um, so that the commitment is there. Um, as you become more experienced, you'll use it to review. You'll actually use it to sum up your numbers from the previous week, month or quarter, um, and you'll use it to set your intentions for the week. When you set your intentions of, hey, I'm gonna make this many calls, I'm gonna um, have a target of getting this many appointments, guess what happens? You tend to actually make that many calls and get that many appointments if you're committed to the number. Those of you who are brand new, you won't know that, so we're not gonna start spending our time there today. Now, um, that's really just it, plan and launch a week. It might take you, you know, it took me 15 minutes to plan and launch my week and review last week. It didn't take me that much time at all. And so guess what, the rest of the morning, I could just do other, other things, right? I mean, that's the whole point is you don't have to spend all the way till noon on these things. You could spend less time, but if you block till noon, then it gives you that time to work on other critical things for your business. Um, Tuesday are in escrow update calls. Again, when I was doing loans, I might have 25, 30 plus escrows going. I had to call the buyer's agent, the listing agent, the client, the transaction coordinators, right? As a realtor, you wanna check in with your client, uh, check in with the lender, because they're probably not checking in with you, unfortunately, actually, although, 
hopefully they're a win by new lender and they've already updated you proactively and your client. Um, you can check in with the listing agent, you can check in with their transaction coordinator, but ultimately the number one thing we know that clients want in a transaction is communication. And so I just set a day, set an expectation um, that you're gonna do it because the weird part is when you tell them you're gonna do it, then they're gonna expect it. And when you tell them you're gonna do it and they expect it, guess what, you do it, it becomes habit, maybe something that you did inconsistently before. Um, Wednesday are buyer and seller calls. So that's, these are people who are not in escrow yet, um, but we are, we have their house listed or we've got a pre-qualification letter, they're a cash buyer. And again, we're keeping in touch with them. And the reason we are is because they have an internet addiction, right? I mean, I don't think it's a surprise to you if I tell you that your clients, when you are uh, thinking that they're waiting for you to send them a property every day, guess what they're doing? They're looking online at those other websites that you and I both know aren't 100% accurate. And they're looking at new houses there. So you gotta be checking with them every week proactively. If they're buying within 30 days, at least every week. If they're buying within 60 days, maybe every other week. And if they're out 60 days plus, I'd be checking them at least every three or four weeks. You know, I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona. We had spring training, we had a, a Phoenix Open, we had uh, auto auction. People would come in, they would wanna get pre-qualified to buy a second home here or a rental property. And guess what? They wouldn't necessarily buy one, but they might come back next year. And guess what? I would have talked to them every three to four weeks during the summer. And guess what they didn't hear from? their realtor. And guess what? I got their financing and I did my best to get it back to the realtor who referred them, but they didn't always get there because oftentimes they had, um, oftentimes they had been distracted by uh, somebody else or something else they found online. They have internet addiction. If you don't check in with them, they won't check in with you. I'm a huge fan of HomeBot. This isn't going to be a HomeBot pitch, but if you've never heard of HomeBot, reach out to me. I'm happy to hook you up with a discount code or, and a loan officer in your area that uses it. Um, Thursday, real estate review calls. Now this is critical. Again, your clients have an internet addiction. They are going online and the number one thing they tell me and they tell you that they're going online for is to see what a house, their house value is. And do you think they're accurate? Hmm. I think you just shook your head no. And you can put it in the chat too if you want. Uh, so the question is, is that if you're their realtor, you're their trusted advisor, but they're not calling you for the value and they're going online and they're looking at it, they think that's true, who do they see as the expert in value, you or that online site? Oh, sorry, that was a tricky move. I mean, but it's true. They actually view the on-site site as the expert, not you. You've got to do real estate reviews quarterly is best, at least a couple times a year. HomeBot is great that it sends out um, updates to them uh, with value each month. And I, I promise you it's going to create great customer engagement. So reach out to me. I'm happy to talk to you about that. And then Friday's really just wrap up the week, right? Really get prepared for your weekend. You guys work hard. So um, what, what uh, open houses, you know, what does your open house need if you have one scheduled? Uh, what do you need to do to get your buyer tour set up if you're taking out buyers? Uh, what is it that someone canceled that needs to be rescheduled? What did you cancel that needs to be rescheduled? Really just wrap up your week. So if you have a weekend off, you can enjoy your weekend off. And if you're working that you're actually more efficient on that. And so um, again, you have a ton of time in there. If you commit yourself to these, activities and you record it, you'll figure out how many you have to do, right? I mean, that's the whole key. So that's really the ideal week in a nutshell. Um, bottom line is this, right? Is that those who plan their weeks have the most success, the fastest and gain momentum. Um, I've got some more in-depth things on ideal week. You can always reach out to me or look through our library of information um, to get more on it. Oftentimes people ask me, well, what do I say to my clients when I call them on Wednesdays um, or Thursdays? And what I would just say is this, right? Right now, this is the first of July. 2019, the first thing I'd be asking a client this week or last week or the week before is, uh, hey, what are you doing for 4th of July? If I call them next week or the week after, the week after that, I'd be saying, hey, what did you do for 4th of July had I not asked already? If I knew they were going boating with their cousin and their brother um, and their kids, then I'd be saying, hey, how was boating with your cousin and your brother and your kids, right? Those are things that you want to build that relationship and rapport so they remember to call you when they've got a question versus clicking the button that says, ask the listing agent a question. Just checking in, super easy script, just checking in. Any questions for me? Again, your people whose listings aren't selling, they've got worries, you need to be checking in with them every week. Your buyers who are out shopping and this, the perfect house hasn't come along, they're worried. That's why they're looking online. Let them know I have your back, right? Let them know that other website is inaccurate. Um, you can let them know that you heard from their lender and that something's changed on the loan program that they were qualified for. You can say, I heard from my lender and there's something that happened with the Fed and interest rates. That's all super boring, so I don't really like to talk about that stuff if I'm a realtor. But nonetheless, just know those are other things that you can talk to your clients about. All right, any questions on that? And then if not, I'm just going to jump in and talk about the day of the week. What do you guys got going in the day of a week? Um, 
So at the end of the week, let's just walk through WinBinding. So open up to any page of it, right? So the first off is you'll just see right down here on the side, it's just the day of your calendar, right? So if you look at mine, right, what shows here on my, on my ideal week is just transfer over to today, right? To my next day here, right? So there it is, it's just right here on the, on the day of the next week. And so I would encourage you guys just to do that. Now, yes, you have it on your phone, but I can look at this thing sitting on my desk while I'm making appointments and making phone calls a lot faster than I can look at it there. I do have some people who say, gosh, Todd, I'm just not gonna do that. Um, I've got a realtor who runs a big team and he actually tracks, he calls his ideal week in his phone and he tracks here in uh, win by noon on this page. What did he actually do? So if he said he was going to lead generate from nine to 11, he's writing lead generate, lead generate. Oh my gosh, at 10 o'clock, I answered that call and I talked about a home inspection that wasn't lead generation. Top three in gratitude, right? There's so many studies out there that say if I start my day being grateful with gratitude that I'm going to have just a better day, I've got a better mindset. Uh, my encouragement is like, I'm grateful for my family every day. My encouragement is to find something different about my family to be encouraged, to be grateful for every day. So I would encourage you to do that. Just don't put the same thing. I'm grateful for my spouse. I'm grateful for my kids. I'm grateful for my business. I'm um, trying to vary that up a little bit. I'm um, top three. You can do one of two ways. So if I'm a, if I'm a true productivity guru, I'm going to tell you that that is your top three that you do in your role. So for you guys, it's probably lead generation, lead conversion, and client consultation, right? Both buyer and seller presentations. That's oftentimes, you could be a leader of a team, you could be leading as one of yours. Um, and you would hear productivity gurus like Darren Hardy and others, and they would actually put that in their top three every day. Like what are those vital few things I have to do? For me, you know what? It was dial today. It was good teach the team I taught this morning, and it's these webinars this afternoon. Most people use it for one of my top three things today. And then below that, you're going to start um, tracking, uh, recording the activities that are most important to you, right? So we're, we're going to record our buyer and seller calls because we want to know how many calls do I have to make the buyer and seller leads in order to get a buyer or seller to talk to me. And then how many buyers and sellers do I have to talk to in order to get a listing or a buyer appointment, right? That's, that's the whole keys, the whole idea that we're going to track through in the business planning process. Database calls, right? How many people in my database am I calling? Um, client calls, right? These are people in process, right? These are my clients that are out shopping with me. These are my listings that I have, right? So database is someone who you, is in your sphere and you've already closed. Client someone who's in with you right now and lead is someone who you're trying to get in front of and trying to get to become a client. And then last but not least, we got these other boxes here. Um, earlier this year, our number one request was people wanted to track door knocking. Well, you can do that there. This can be to track whatever it else is that you want to track. Uh, quality conversations. Um, what is a quality conversation? Um, it is a phone call or a text conversation with someone where you actually um, communicated something back and forth between each other. Easiest is to tell you what it's not. Ring, ring. Hey, it's Todd, your favorite realtor. Not interested. Click. Ring, ring. It's Todd, your favorite realtor. Oh, Todd, I'm really busy. Can you call me back next week? Click. Not a quality conversation. Talk to somebody about uh, buying or selling a home. Talk to somebody who's in process, a client about their appraisal or their home inspection, quality conversation. How many people am I talking to? Most of these I find are on the phone, but if you're a big texter, then it could be via text. It's not really email. There's no such thing as a quality email conversation. Just saying. Be consistent with it. That's what matters the most. Um, I like my definitions. The reason why is because we've got, you know, a thousand plus other realtors around the country using those definitions. And as we get our technology built out. We've got a national scoreboard where you can compare yourself to everyone else. It'd be easier for you to compare if you have the same definition as them. Um, then we have actually live meetings, buyer consultations and seller consultations, right? These are going to be face-to-face -face consultations that you're doing. It could be done via video. I am hearing of a few people doing those, but ultimately it's you sitting at their kitchen table or they're coming into, into your office and you sitting down doing a consultation with them. Um, because again, I want to know how many how many listing appointments do I need in order to get a listing, right? And is there room for improvement on my conversion rate? And how am I doing compared to a teammate or someone else? If I had 10 listing appointments, I only got five listings. Maybe I need to sharpen my skill and change my presentation. I can learn from the person who got 10 appointments and got, you know, eight or nine, uh, you know, converted. So again, the numbers will tell you where you have weaknesses and where there's opportunities to grow. Um, below that is just new leads, right? So hopefully you have a CRM, but again, I'm, I'm just writing it down here while I'm on the fly. And then I'm just crossing it off when I get it into my CRM. Some people don't have a CRM, then this is your CRM and you're going to use it that way. That is okay. Not ideal, but that is okay. Um, below, we're just going to total everything up, right? So you just going to total these things up at the end of the day. So at the end of the week, it's easier to total up your weekly totals. Um, there's a couple blank ones here, right? That's where you can put your door knocking or whatever else you, is you do. Um, we've got things like uh, prospecting time. So if you run on a dialer, then track your prospecting time maybe versus the people that you actually uh, called out to, um, we got adding 
data, you know, people to your database. We've got handwritten notes, other things like that. And um, that's part of these habits of success over here too. There's also a blank habit at the bottom, right? Morning routine, handwritten notes, social media posts. It was hard for me to choose to put that on there, but I realized, especially um, being someone who spoke at Gary Vee's event, that social media is really important to your business. And I want to have a commitment. Okay. My goal is to commit uh, to post once a day or three times a week or whatever that is. And um, then you can track it or you can do hours. Like if you're like, Oh, I'm going to get all my business. Cause I'm going to go in there and like 30 clients a day, whatever that commitment is that you think you need to do track it because you're also going to track, gosh, they get sucked in. I do 15 extra minutes in, in there that I really should not have done that, that I did, which, um, you know, it's not good. You know, we know that, uh, you know, those who exercise have good morning and evening routines. It gets just a little more well-rounded. We want to, we want to focus on that as well. Um, just a to-do list here with the top ones by, um, to be done before noon. Right. And so again, just trying to keep you guys a little bit more organized notes for notes on your clients. Um, and then highs of my day down here, that's the bookend to what am I grateful for? Right. I'm, I'm gratitude. Oh my gosh. I was high on my day was this webinar with all of you. Was I proactive or reactive today? Did I finish before afternoon? I mean, I had this, the meeting this morning. And so um, I normally don't do meetings in the morning, but guess what? That team meets 11 o'clock every Monday and they gave me the opportunity to come speak at their team meeting. So I could have said, no, I have a commitment at that time. Can we meet at, at noon? And they would have laughed at me. This is when they do it week in and week out and have for years. So I made the opportunity to go there. Had someone else call me and say, hey, Todd, any chance you can talk Monday morning? I'm like, nope, got a commitment at the time. We'll be talking in the afternoon. And they said, sure, right? Um, it was super important. I could have uh, given up my prospecting time, my, my outbound calling time, and I could have instead chosen to actually... Uh, talk to them during that time, but that's unacceptable to me. And, you know, they're not on here because they were a loan officer. They're not important. It's not that important to me, right? It's more important to me to do my proactive activities because I know I can, I can turn it around later and use it as a teaching example. Gosh, when I even do it first and what they had wasn't urgent, right? You have to run it through that. Is it important or urgent filter? Um, but for me, right, I already circled in my planner. I'm going to finish my priorities afternoon because I've got time scheduled this afternoon after these webinars to do my dialing because that's in the end, you know, if I'm going to, record the activities and, and do what I committed to do. Uh, and in this case, I'm trying to get three days worth, five days worth of work done in three days. I've got to do that. And so um, I start with the idea week because I want you guys to understand that those are the activities that the best real estate agents do and that, and that that's why we put them in here. You can order those in any order you want. You can stack two or three of them in one day if that's better for you. I'm going to be in the office on Tuesdays and Thursdays and get those things done, whatever that looks like. But I would encourage you to be making lead calls and database calls daily. I would encourage you to be updating your, your clients that are in process, uh, that are, that are pre-approved and not yet in process. And I would also encourage you to be doing uh, real estate reviews. You're new to win by noon. It can be overwhelming. Just start planning today, right? Just start tomorrow. If not, of just of recording your activities and at the end of the week, total them up and then say, huh, I made 80 calls this week and I didn't get any listings or any buyers. Okay. Maybe I need to do a hundred next week, right? I did 40 calls this week and I got one new buyer. I want two new buyers. I better try 80 calls next week. And the more you do that every week after week that you do it, the law of average will kick in and you'll figure it out. Cause maybe, maybe it took 40 calls this week and next week it takes 30 calls. Maybe it took 40 calls this week. Next week it takes 50 calls. So at the end of the month, you'll have better data. But if you don't start recording your activities, then you won't actually start building up quote unquote, the law of averages and all the data that we have here. So, um, all right. Prepare your questions. You guys have been a quiet audience, which is okay. Um, ironically, I used to get a ton of questions and I built in what I find are the most common questions in the presentation. So when I don't get it, I'm never offended. Um, let's see. I don't like to say, um, that's my Toastmasters guy. Me. So let me throw out a last couple of opportunities to learn more and to connect. Number one is if you're totally lost, just email me, Todd at winbynoon.com. Um, number two is if you need a little bit of accountability, we're running a free 90 day, free 90 day, free 30 day challenge, a four week challenge right now in a group that we have. Um, you have to private message me or email me. You can't private message me unless we're friends on Facebook because it may go into the, like the spam filter that Facebook has. And uh, so I may not see it, but we're starting a four week challenge again and it's free for the first 30 days for the challenge. You can subscribe after that if you found it of value. I'd love to have you in there. It's an extra accountability. Um, there's information in the win by new user mastermind group. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just add yourself to that group win by new user mastermind group. It's a free group where um, I update people and people trade their great ideas and their exciting things that are going on in win by noon. And 
there'll be more webinars like this. So um, subscribe to the winbynoon.com forward slash calendar. There's a little subscribe button there on the top right. If you subscribe to that, then it'll notify you every time I put in new webinars. As I said, I'll be doing a little bit more advanced webinars down the road. Um, bottom line is, is that this is all about you. It's for you to grow your business. And the harder that you, uh, I don't want to say the harder that you work, because this is about working harder, the smarter that you work. The more committed you are to the concepts that we talk about, then I know the results will follow. So as always, I appreciate you all taking the time to be here. Uh, that was a quick run through, and I'm grateful that you took the time to be here today. Have a fabulous one, and I look forward to seeing you in the one by noon.